Hi guys, it's Gary here again. Uh, firstly, I'd just like to apologise for the lack of video updates recently. I've been pretty busy and a bit low on thumbs as well. So the project's kind of taken the back burner at the minute. Um, but, obviously I'm back with another video right now. Um, this video that we'll be playing in a few minutes, I did film quite a while back, about a month or two back. I can't, I can't remember when the last time I made a video was. But I think this is the last one. I'm not sure if there was another video that recorded it as well. I'll try and find that out, and if so, I'll upload that one as well. Um, but this is the only one that I've got on the computer, so it might be still on my video camera somewhere. But yeah, like I said, I've obviously I've been on vacation on, and things, and obviously I just had a lot of things to pay for, so money's been kind of low. And obviously without money, I've had not really much motivation to do it, which is kind of a bad thing, but <clears throat> there we go. And also, um, like I say, I was on vacation, and I started a new YouTube channel up as well. A YouTube channel is called UK Orlando Visitor, and basically it's just a, um, a channel of videos from around the Orlando, Florida area, from around the theme parks and things like that. So if you want to go check that out and help me on that, uh, support me on that channel, that'd be great. I'll put a link in the description below. Basically, like I say, what it's about. At the moment, there's a lot of Halloween Horror Nights things up. If any of you are into um, Halloween Horror Nights or into ho any kind of horror events itself, prop making, anything like that, then obviously there's lots of videos up from Halloween Horror Nights that'll be suitable for you. Um, or if you just want to go check it out and see what I've got anyway, there's lots of things from Disney Parks and Universal as well. So please check that out, support me on there, and that's about it. So I'll play the I'll play the video that I recorded a while ago, and hopefully it'll come in handy. I'll like I say I'll try to look for the video that I think I recorded. If I find it, I'll post it online. Um, but as for now, like I say, Iron Man's been pushed on the back burner. I did pull a resin cast of the helmet and to be honest with you it was it was good it took a lot of clean up so I'm kind of a bit dubious about that but um, apart from that um, it was okay I've been thinking about uh, making a helmet out of clay like um, making a mold of my head so I can build it around my actual shape shape of my actual head making the helmet out of clay smoothing it down so it's a lot of less work after it's been pulled in resin or fiberglass or whatever I'll decide to use um, so at the moment I'm kind of wondering whether to make it in clay like I say it's all down to money but that'll be for a future update but as for now I'll play the video and hopefully um, you guys will enjoy it Hey guys, it's Gary at Stark Warehouse here once again. Um, in this video I'll be showing you the process of the silicone moulding. As you can see, I've got my, silic um, got my helmet rested on a cone here. The first thing you'll notice different is I'm wearing gloves. When messing with any kind of resin, silicone or anything with that, you always want to protect your hands. You want to protect any part of your body really. So, wear gloves. Um, I'll show you the other pieces of things that I've got. Obviously, little things that you'll need. Disposable paper cups I use. You can use plastic, I guess, but I prefer paper. Um, I have the actual silicone here. That's just a small tub. The big tub is right over in the back there. Can you see it? <laughs> um, I have the additive um, for the silicone that sets it. I can't remember what it's named that called now. But yeah, that's <laughs> the additive for the silicone. And a thickener for the silicone just makes it a bit thicker. I won't be using that just yet. Also, I've bought some cheap disposable paintbrushes, throwaway paintbrushes that um, just got from a local home department store. Um, first thing you want to do with these to make sure you're going to get a nice coverage of silicone is basically bash it and pull out all the loose bristles 
because if you don't do that you can end up with a lot of hairs or bristles in the silicone which may cause it to give it a bad mould. So you just want to make sure you've got as many bristles out as possible. Okay, to start with, and take one of these cups. I'm just going to set the camera up because obviously it wants to start playing with the silicone. I don't want to be touching the camera too much. Okay. So basically, this silicone is um, 10 to 1, which basically means 10 parts silicone to 1 part of the additive. So what I'm going to do is basically make about 100 grams, so that means 100 grams of this to 10 grams of that. So I'm just going to measure 100 grams of this out. Obviously you want to make sure the measurements are very accurate because obviously I've spent a lot of time and money researching how much, how, how many parts to how many other parts. Like that at the minute minus is 101 grams. So I'm just going to take a little bit out to get it bang on 100 grams. Okay, so once you've done that, obviously that's 10, 100 parts. So we're going to need 10 parts of this. Um, this need to give this a pretty good shake before using it. This basically sets the silicone. So you want to pour in 10 grams of this. Now these scales aren't brilliant so I like to just touch them just to make sure it's registering it properly because sometimes it doesn't show it in real time so it's got to like tap it just to get it in time there we go 10 grams of that so now we're going to take the wooden and just give that a nice mix. Obviously you don't want to spill any so be careful when you're doing that. And this is obviously the silicone's white and the additive is red. So when you mix it it's going to turn a nice pink colour. So let's give that a quick mix. When you mix in you want to make sure you scrape the sides of the cup and the bottom of the cup to make sure that every single part of silicone is mixed in well because if not you'll end up with some parts of silicone that won't set because obviously the additive makes it set so you want to make sure every little bit is completely set right now once it's mixed in because this is the first layer, I'm not going to put any thickener in it. I'm just going to dive straight in with the brush and brush it on. Which is an easy enough process. Just as if painting a wall. Don't be worried about using too much or too less or whatever. Just slap it straight on there. When you brush it on, it does seem thick but it will um, become thinner once it settles and it will flow with gravity so it will be pulled towards the ground so it will run so you want to make sure you keep an eye out on any low parts of what you're moulding to make sure it's not running onto the floor or anything that's why I'm doing it on this blue tarpaulin so that if it does run, um, it's just going to go on that and not anywhere else. Okay, so I'll just brush this all over and come back to you when it's done. And there we are. So that turned out to be a pretty good guesstimate of how much silicone I need for the first layer. And 100 grams just got me the entire way around nicely. 
So I'm pleased with that, that I didn't mix up too much or too less. Even if you mix too much, just always just leave it till it starts setting a little bit and then you can thicken the coats up. Um, but obviously that's just the first layer. So I use 100 grams on the first layer. And the first layer is always a detail coat, so that's just to pick all the details up. So any subsequent layer after this will um, use more silicone. So instead of 100 grams per layer, I don't know, it might use maybe 500 grams to complete the helmet next time. And I need at least maybe two, three layers on. So probably looking at about a kilogram of silicone, if not more, to be used on the helmet. Um, so that's the first layer for now. Um, trying to think of anything else to say about it. But I will be back with you when this dries to do the next layers. Um, I might get this up online now just so you can guys can see it and don't have to keep waiting. As soon as I keep telling you that I'm going to mould it, and it's been a long time now, so. I'll get this straight up online so you can see it and then I'll get another video up with the second layer. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon.